Hello everyone, I'm Tim and this is 1001 Paintings. Welcome to our second video. It's here. <laughs> Who knew? I thought that I would take this opportunity as I'm sort of getting everything in order to talk to you about what I'm doing to get everything in order. That seems to make the most sense to me. Uh, let's keep you informed on what's going on and how things are progressing at this point. So basically I thought about this project and I thought there's about four areas that I need some real preparation. And the first one was of course getting our handy dandy little book. And how was I going to deal with this information? This is a very big book, as you can see, very thick, some, you know, 700 plus pages and uh, contains a lot of information in it. Um, and I had previously, even on trips I had been on, I had taken the book and at various times tabbed it. If I was going on like my Madrid trip, uh, my Madrid art trip, I would tab the pages that had paintings that were in and around Madrid so that I could read a little bit about those paintings and know before I went uh, what I might be looking for at a particular museum if I wanted to go to that museum. But that's a lot of time and a lot of energy. And I thought, well, I guess I could create an Excel spreadsheet and, you know, it will take a while uh, to get all the information in. But if I do, then my life will be a lot easier. Then I can sort by territory. I can sort by artist. I can, uh, you know, sort by the name of the painting or even just a quick search through the document itself, all 1001 paintings. So... I started to create that spreadsheet, and then I thought to myself, Tim, work smarter, not harder. Is that the phrase? I don't know. Um, so I Googled 1001 Paintings Excel and came up with a Google Docs public doc that someone had already created. They had already taken all of this information and created a spreadsheet with it. So I was able to download that information and then start sorting it myself. Here it is, it's a about 30 page or so uh, Excel spreadsheet. And now I can sort by territory and you know, some of that information that I had for you in the first video about you know, over 700 of the paintings being in uh, just five countries, you know, I was able to readily discern that by being able to sort the information and have it in front of me. Uh, and readily accessible. So that was really great. And that saved me an immense amount of time. So from, you know, from that point, I now know what my universe is. I have an easy way to deal with that piece of information. Um, and that was basically, I think, the first hurdle that I'm trying to overcome, right? How do I get, wrap my head around 1001 paintings and how do I try to see them? So the second thing I needed to do, I thought, if I were going to make videos about seeing these 1001 paintings, was sort of maybe get some skills about how to look at art. Now, I've watched many, many videos about art and artists over the years. Um, I uh, tend to uh, watch a lot of the movies made by exhibition on screen. I think they're great. Um, you know, uh, an hour and a half is a long time to commit to one artist. I understand if you're not a big fan of that artist, um, but they are great and informative videos. And it's a great way to see, uh, they, they are usually centered around an exhibition that has been traveling. Um, and you can really get the chance to see an exhibition while no one else is in the room. Uh, I'll say historically, one of my most uh, frustrating uh, times when I'm viewing art is when a museum is too crowded and that is usually with a special exhibition. Um, I, I, I don't ever want to crowd people or push people aside or we weasel my way in to see a painting um, and that's basically you know it, it, on certain exhibitions it can be like that through the whole exhibition. There are many times where I've just cut the entire first room in an exhibition and finished the exhibition because the 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 backlog of people and the log jam that happens in those first rooms are, are pretty bad. So, um, and it's like the, you know, the Mona Lisa every day. If you've been to the Mona Lisa, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So 
Um, so one of the things that I did is I remembered a, a, a series of videos that I watched made by the great courses. And um, you can watch these videos yourself on the Great Courses Plus. Um, I guess I'll put a link down below for that. And also, but what I do instead of paying, you know, a lot of money for a subscription or for buying the course individually, which I believe you can still do uh, at around $350, it's a course called How to Look at and Understand Great Art. And it's by a professor named Sharon Hirsch. Um, and she's really quite wonderful. And it's about a 36, I want to say 36 lecture or episode series. Uh, the first 21 lectures of those are based uh, are based in how to look at and understand art. So, you know, many of the videos talk about line and color and shape and perspective and, you know, give you a set of a glossary of terms that hopefully when I'm talking about a painting with you, I can convey things in a way that's universally understood. I'm not, and I'm not just talking about, wow, that color is really bright. Well, that's not particularly helpful. Is it, you know, is it, uh, uh, what is its color value um, is the proper term and, you know, is it a dark value or a light value? So those are types of things that I'm, you know, going back and watching these videos again. And how am I doing that personally? I'm doing that with a, a site called Canopy, K-A-N-O-P-Y. And it's brought to me by my public library. I join the public library wherever I live. I think it's a great resource. It's not, you know, as a person who grew up going to the library, I think many people today think it is an antiquated and dated sort of mo modality for getting information. But the truth is they haven't, they haven't fallen so far behind. And with your library card, many, many libraries, and most of which I've ever joined, belong to this canopy, which is like a Netflix for alternative art house movies and for these great courses. Um, my particular town limits me to three viewings a month, but interestingly, what's accepted from that are these great courses. So uh, I've watched this one on how to understand and look at art, and as well as one on the Renaissance, uh, art, artists and art in the Renaissance. Um, and there are many, many options, not just on art, but lots of different topics that they cover in the great courses. And I highly recommend them. They're really well done usually and uh, very interesting. So, and that can be free. You can watch those for free. And even as part of the viewing in Canopy, um, if you go to their website and watch it on a PC, you can download the accompanying, uh, uh, reading materials, so the actual course outline and any of the documents that came with that particular course. So those you can get for free as well. So I highly recommend that. That's called Canopy again, and um, that's a, a great way to learn a little bit about where I might be going in these videos. Okay, uh, the last 15, just to finish that thought, the last 15 videos or so uh, from 21 to 36 are about each particular art movement or period of time. And while those are interesting and nice, um, they're not, I don't think is crucial to our discussion. Um, I don't think the videos are gonna be about why a particular piece is a great example of high Renaissance art. I don't, I don't think that is, um, there are people who have way better skills to describe that to you and explain that to you. I, I'm just a guy who likes art. I, I have no official art background. I didn't even take an art survey college, uh, art survey course in college. So there, there's no official training here. I'm not coming to you with any agenda or any specific way of looking at art that has been ingrained into me. Um, I'm just a person who enjoys looking at art. So I'm using this opportunity in this particular video to sort of learn some of the vocabulary and refresh myself, having viewed it before, on what that vocabulary is and maybe come up with like a crib sheet or something that maybe I'll eventually share with everyone about you know, ask myself these five questions, what, or 10 questions about any particular given painting. How do I focus in um, my analysis and how I'm looking at the painting to determine whether in fact, at the end, I have an opinion about it. Do I like it? Do I hate it? Is it not for me? Um, so those are uh, some of the things that I'm hoping to get out of this, um, uh, out of taking that course and getting ready to, 
prepare these videos for you. So that would be my uh, second big preparation area, which is sort of uh, getting myself the skills to talk about art in these videos. The third area that I'm looking into and I think that I need to sort of work on, because uh, I, again, have no particular skills in this, is how to make videos and how to be a YouTuber. Um, I have watched a lot of YouTube videos in my life, as most people, on various topics related mostly to travel um, and to, you know, workout videos. I have found a great, you know, for many years I did yoga with Adrienne. She's a great YouTuber um, and very uh, easy to learn yoga. If you want to learn yoga, I highly recommend recommend it. Um, so I have spent many of my years um, watching YouTube videos, but making a YouTube video is really not uh, a skill that I think that I currently have. Um, but, you know, things that I'm doing are, I think I have a leg up with an iPhone 13. I just happen to have that um, as my phone. So I'm creating, I think, higher definition videos right now. Someday that may change and I decide that I need something much greater than that. Um, and I would, you know, ultimately perhaps invest in some better equipment to make these videos better. I, you know, I'm, I'm staging it a little bit in, you know, various areas of my house right now. And, you know, I can create a flat background and have a pretty nice video. The question is, how does this all hold up when I'm standing outside the Philadelphia Museum of Art? I have no idea. We'll see how it goes. Another part of that was downloading the teleprompter app. So like the first video that I did was highly scripted, whereas this is, you know, I'm using a little crib sheet here, but not um, p perfectly scripted. And so um, I downloaded that app and was using it as a practice to like how to read from a teleprompter and perhaps, you know, create more um, planned videos. And I would imagine on certain aspects of the videos that I create, if they specifically refer to a piece of art, um, you know, at my oh so advanced stage, uh, my ability to hold on to information <laughs> is not as great as it used to be. So, you know, the particular facts or dates related to a painting may be something that I have to have sort of prompted to me to remind me of exactly uh, that information. So the teleprompter app I downloaded. Uh, another one that I downloaded uh, was an editing software. Uh, it's called Shotcut. Uh, it was recommended on a bunch of sites. I did some research uh, as a free editing software. I, last, Obviously, last video was so short there was no editing, and I'm not sure that I would even do editing on this video. Um, but it's got, I understand that going forward is something that I will need to learn and need to do. So that would be, you know, the third major area of preparation that I'll be working on in the coming weeks, which is how to become a video editor. Uh, this is not something that I did. I took, you know, <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm vaguely on social media. I don't have an Instagram account. I don't have a Twitter account. You know, I'm basically on Facebook from 15 years ago uh, when it first, you know, really broke and then I just didn't have an interest in keeping up. So again, this is a little out of character for me and not something that I'm particularly skilled at. So be patient. Uh, I'll work on it. I promise to, you know, keep uh, keep trying and trying to make more interesting videos, more uh, visually, you know, uh, uh, professional, let's say, professional looking videos and, and more, um, you know, more varied videos than me just sitting in front of a wall. So, so that would be the, the, the third area that I'm working on. The fourth one that I'm working on is, uh, I'm beginning to plan various trips on how I can, you know, start to check off large groups of paintings, one of which would be in the near future, a trip to uh, the Philadelphia Museum of Art. I believe there's at least 10 currently hanging paintings that are in the book that are uh, in the Philadelphia Museum of Art. So that could be a solid day of me in the museum and looking at those paintings and recording and getting ready videos for you about that. Um, I would also imagine um, New York City is not very far away from me, an hour and 20 minutes, let's say. And um, I could, you know, again, check many, many of the thousand and one painting boxes by doing local trips even first at the very beginning. Um, I, 
I would love and I probably will take a trip to Europe, uh, including, you know, even the UK is not that very far for me and could be a long weekend trip where I can, you know, have access and ability to see many paintings all at once. Uh, so um, that's, that's another area that I'm working on. That's area number four is planning and how to begin uh, bringing these videos to you and how I can start, you know, generating the content for you. And then finally, my fifth area that I'm working on is, you know, exactly what do, what types of videos that I think I would be preparing and, and working that out through my, in my head. And the first one, I think there's, there would be about three types of videos. And the first one would be an individual art piece video. So as I see a particular painting, we would talk about it. And again, with the background of the how to look at and understand art videos, you know, talk about a particular painting and, you know, why, why it might be on this list. It is not my intention to read to you the description in the book I, for, for various reasons, including copyright issues. Um, I'm not, that's not my intention. Um, but it's more to sort of uh, pr provide my perspective on it and then my takeaway from it. Is it a painting that is really worth seeing? Um, do I agree or do I not agree for it being included in in the book and as time goes on, even given my past experiences at museums, have I seen something by that artist that I think might be more uh, more representative or a better example or uh, you know a painting that I might include instead of the one that the author included? The second type might be a second type of video, might be like a museum-based video or a city-based video that would talk about, okay, on my trip to the Philadelphia Museum, here's what you need to know. Here are some secrets about this museum or secret tips or um, at suggestions on how to navigate the museum and how to work your way through and hit the highlights if you're doing a highlight store or if you wanna spend a whole afternoon at a museum, how to do that um, you know, for a particular museum when I, when I visit it. Another one might be a city tour, which is again, if I'm traveling specifically rather than uh, local travel, uh, far tr far away travel, let's say, um, you know, I, I won't just go to museums. I'll go to cathedrals or synagogues or, you know, natural history museums or the top, you know, sites in a particular town. And, you know, there, I could share that with you as well in a video. So that's another type of video that would be more city-based to talk about, you know, not just the art in that city, but also other things that you could do while you, while incorporating art museums into that trip. So, and a third uh, video, uh, type of video might be about traveling and, you know, uh, how, how I travel. Meaning, how am I booking hotels? How am I choosing hotels? How, how am I, you know, selecting the credit cards that I use that get me free access to, um, that get me free access to lounges in airports? You know, that's the sort of information that people are always asking me about, honestly. You know, what credit card am I big on right now? And how, which points am I saving and hoarding and getting ready to, you know, go on a trip? Um, and which, which airline am I trying to get status on? And, you know, all of those things are something that I regularly regularly deal with and have experience in. So as they come up, I think that that might be helpful to people as well. You know, if you want to plan one of these art trips, how do you save up for it? How do you, you know, one of the, you know, one of the things I think off the top of my head is that, you know, planning a trip to go to museums is not something you want to plan for in warm months. You know, I, I, there's nothing better than, than, you know, going to a place like Madrid in January when the crowds are less and you you don't feel like you're missing something by going to an art museum. You know, by going in June, the competition is really hard to not want to get on a bike and bike through, you know, the park. I understand that and I get that. So stuff like that and you end up, you know, by traveling in January, if you want to do an art trip, you know, the, the airfares are cheaper, the hotels are cheaper. You know, there are ways in which you can travel wisely and not, and be frugal about it um, and still get to do what you want to do. So maybe there would be a third class of videos about that, about, you know, travel tips and how to make these trips happen if you want to. 
So that's basically what I'm up to. I'm up to, you know, five different areas that I am focusing on and trying to compile, you know, information and get things together and get ready. And, um, you know, I'm hoping it won't be long that I'll, you know, be taking my first trip to the Philadelphia Museum of Art and I can bring you one of our first videos and we can talk about, you know, what you like, what you don't like, you know, is this a great format for you and for me? So uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm still really excited. You know, video two, here we go. Hold on. Till next time.